Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on November 3rd, 2023. Welcome to another Surviving Day on the Planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well. Earthquakes, look at volcanic weather and space weather, world weather. Always starting out here looking at our sun for the last 48 hours. Pretty large plasma filament eruption. Top right-hand side, you'll watch it rip away and fall back into the sun. A little bit of everything going on right now. Coronal holes, sunspots, solar flares, plasma filament eruptions. Having a look at the last 48 hours incoming. We do have a pretty active sunspot region turning in. And as well, plasma filament prominence. Looking at the last 48 hours outgoing, this is where we'll see in the center region, plasma filament take off from the sun and as well whip and curl back into the surface. Another closer look here at that region. Amazing images here, Solar Dynamics Observatory mixed with daily events worldwide. Having a look at multi-spectrum at the last 48 hours of events, most notable was that large eruption there. It did produce a coronal mass ejection and as well, big coronal hole. Getting ready for an earth facing about event. And it looks to be about the same shape as that last one that came through, but was in the Northern hemisphere. So interesting dynamics on our sun right now. 171 angstroms. Looking at our very loopy sunspot regions cresting in. And right now we have seven sunspots that are visible. Another look here at our sunspot regions. We do have that big sunspot region coming in from the west. And as well, a large one turning away. Current space weather conditions, there are none to report. And our solar winds are coming in at 472 kilometers per second right now. Solar X-ray flux remains in a lowered C range, dropping down to a heightened B after seeing a couple C-class solar flares today and as well an M-class minor. Solar proton flux, slight increase, a little bit agitated today, and a KP index of 1. Having a look at the ISPA space prediction spiral, showing a CME taking off towards the Pepe satellite. And as well, noting there, the yellow circle is Earth showing all of the space weather heading our way. Another space weather model here showing some interesting activity coming in from the 6th into the 7th. Lasco 2 showing the last 48 hours of imagery. A couple CMEs from yesterday and then the most recent CMEs today. That was a full halo CME. And that ISWAS space prediction spiral, I do believe did put out a CME towards us, but I missed it. So stay tuned. We'll have to see what comes next. Having a look at earthquakes for the past 24 hours, not much to talk about, but notable here, 5.7 earthquake, the largest past 24 hours here reporting Pacific Antarctic Ridge, which is a pretty strange place for an earthquake. Don't report earthquakes there often at all. 5.1 earthquake there, South Sandwich Islands, Minor activity, southern Chile into the Nazca Plate, still seeing a lot of activity. And as well up into northern Chile, 4.9 there, mid-Atlantic Ridge, increasing activity through Puerto Rico. Mexico and Nicaragua, 4.4. Then across the United States, Ohio, California, 3.9, largest earthquake across American soil. Not much to report. 4.6. Iceland, and they've been seeing a lot of earthquakes recently, so heads up Iceland, you could see an eruption here shortly. A lot of geologists and volcanologists through the region are reporting and warning. As well, a 5.1 earthquake here, Russia, that is right where the Ebico volcano is. And as well, minor activity going through the Philippines plate. Some pretty deep earthquakes today to report 5.3 at a 556 kilometer depth. That is the deepest past 24 hours, but a couple other deep ones there through the region. 
and as well 5.6 here in Joomla, Nepal, 17 kilometer depth, Nepal, 5.6 earthquake. 5.1 also reported here in Greece and a 4.5 through the islands. And that's the last 24 hours for earthquakes right now. USGS reporting about 230. But most notable, please, heads up, Iceland. We could see an eruption soon. A lot of minor activity and increasing larger magnitude earthquakes. Having a look here, the last seven days for earthquakes around the world. And thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoy all of the information shared here with daily events worldwide. If you live in an earthquake prone zone, please have a go bag ready and know what to do during a major earthquake. Now let's get to our sulfur dioxide map as it has changed a little bit, a little more intense today. Large volcanic cloud moving across the Pacific Ocean from an eruption at most likely Ebico volcano south of Kamchatka. As you can see, forecasted here, a lot of this SO2 coming off of the coast there of Kamchatka. And now by the weekend, it will be flooding into North America. A quick look here around the rest of the world for SO2 emissions. This is all from volcanic activity. And much love everybody. I hope that you have a safe and healthy weekend. Thank God it's Friday. Now let's get to world weather brought to you by windy.com showing the next five day forecast here over, starting overlooking North America as we have a lingering low for Eastern Canada coming from the Hudson Bay and a couple cold highs, big low pressure system coming in to the BC coastline, Washington, and then eventually southward. Alberta Clipper here forming for Monday into Tuesday and then affecting Ontario in the long range, affecting the Atlantic provinces with most likely snow and some very strong winds. Cold highs moving into the Canadian prairies as lots of moisture moves into the west coast of Canada and the United States. And then watching the long range, big system coming out of Texas and a very cold forecast here for most of eastern Canada. A look at temperatures as we could see minus four in some regions of Ontario, minus 10 with wind chill. Overlooking Europe and North Africa, still multiple lows coming into Europe coastline right now, affecting Ireland, the United Kingdom, some pretty strong systems moving through central Africa as well. Daily evaporation rains could be heavy at times along the coast. And long range forecast could see a couple cyclones developing and a very windy and cold event. Long range forecast for the United Kingdom overlooking South Africa, Australia, Southeast Asia. No major cyclones developing. Pretty strong low south of South, Af South Africa. And then watch as get another low whipping and creating a long line of moisture stretching to the Antarctic. Quick look here overlooking the Pacific Ocean. Huge high pressure ridge right now. Or sorry, long range forecast. We still have these low pressure systems grinding up into BC and Alaska. The rain train continues. Strong system heading across North and South Korea. And then watching the long range forecast for these systems to head into the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. Let's have a quick look here at our upper level winds. This is our polar vortex and it, as it is shaping up for winter 2023. And this is why we've got some pretty cold and windy conditions right now. 
it is right over top of us. Quick look at our equatorial lines and jet streams. A little look, northern versus the southern. Intense systems heading into Europe. Certainly has changed even over the past couple weeks dramatically. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's show. And if you did, please don't forget to give a like, share with your friends and family. Thank you so much for being awesome, loving, and very supporting to this channel. Stay aware and prepared, stay young and have fun, and get your daily due. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.